Welcome back. First things first, please subscribe to this channel. We really, really, really appreciate all the new subscribers. Um, please like the video, please share with your friends and family, and also hit the notification bell. It alerts you every time we upload something new or there's any sort of activity on our channel. We have a very interesting discussion today. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it is about our experience of needing to give up our own home, our own space to move in with our parents. That is Lerego's parents and my in-laws. <laughs> so the story begins like this. The lockdown was starting last year. Exciting! Yay! Mm. No more going to work. We were one of those Online. couples, braying Brian, every day, eating <laughs> groceries galore, taking selfies and sharing it with everyone. <laughs> um, and then a couple of weeks into the lockdown, um, Dims and I went to go visit my mom in the park. This is when they just opened up the restrictions because remember there wasn't any inter provincial traveling. Mm. They just lifted that. So it's like you're literally like three, four weeks into the lockdown. I yeah, think so. Kind of kind of thing. May have been in a April, I think a four weeks. Or four so. weeks or yeah, so. Yeah, something like that. Cool, so we went to go visit my mom. My mom is a nurse. Uh, we were a little bit concerned with her, you know, health worker, mm -hmm. COVID, just making sure that she's fine and that she's okay. So we took a trip down to the Val just to go check in on her. So two to three days into our time there with my mom, I opened up my laptop and lo and behold, the first email I see is from my boss. Um, at that time, I was writing for a very, very popular television show on Zanzi Magic. Um, I was part of the writing of that show, really a dream job, really, really a dream job. I was trying to get it, get it for like two years, knocking. And I, it finally opened up and I was in, permanent. I get that email, I open it, and my boss says to me, unfortunately, uh, your services with us have come to an end. I think what we need to mention at that time is we are at that moment in the lounge uh, with Rex's mom. And I remember it so vividly. It was such a, a like a funny moment. I remember us laughing, before, like chatting, before the email, yeah, before yeah. the email. Because you were sitting on the couch with your laptop, and we were all just in conversation, mm -hmm. laughing, you know, the baby play. And I remember just seeing you from the corner of my eye opening, and I just remember your face going. Oh. And I remember I looked at him, and he sort of signaled for me to come sit next to him. And that time, my mom and Louis still, ah, <laughs> you know, chatting. And I sat next to him and then he made me read the email and yo, my heart dropped, my heart dropped. Um, and what was even more difficult after that is we needed, you know, we were not comfortable to tell my mom-in-law just yet. So we needed to keep it all in and sort of just carry on smiling. Yo, that was hard. Mm. That was really hard. Dims was working as well at that point, but my salary was like majority. Three, three quarters of mm. our household income. Yeah, yeah, basically. Like the removal of that income was your. <laughs> yeah, it was like we're gonna have to make big decisions yeah, when that happened. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I lost my job and we're confronted with this situation. And I remember, you know, later that day, after we had just like unwinded, we got into the bedroom and we spoke like what are we going to do <laughs> <laughs> that time we're not even mentioning that we had just moved into a new place yeah, that new we place. really loved we were yeah. there for how many months three months yeah yeah <laughs> we had literally. just moved in it was we were on our third month fourth month fourth, fourth month of our new place yeah, yeah. place that we moved in so mm -hmm. it's like what are we going to do? We're like, we're going to have to make big, big decisions um, because financially it's just not going to <laughs> work for, for us to maintain that, that place, the home that we're in. Um, so we sat down, before everything, we sat down and we prayed together. You know, we believe really that um, all things work out, you know, for good uh, to really those who believe in God. So we prayed together. We said, God, you know what? 
This is the card that we're currently dealt with. Um, we don't take it as bad news, but really an opportunity for something better. Uh, so yeah, we sat down, we did our mathematics, our accounting, and um, after like a couple of days, we realized that we are going to have to move back home. Not move back home, move home. Move home. Yeah. Well, move back home for, for, for you. Me, I and grew then up for there. me, move, move in home. with my mom and dad in law. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> you had never lived with them. Yeah. yeah. We got married and yeah. we were already in a flat. So, yeah, we, we packed our bags, uh, you know, boxes, mm. packed, packed, and we moved home. Mm. Um, four months after getting a new place, we moved back home. Mm. And yeah, and that's when the, the drama began. <laughs> <laughs> Living at home with your wife and your three-year-old child for the first time is like Anaconda, Gold Reef City, mm. right? Mm. Um, there are great moments and then they are like, moments where you're like holding tight and you're like oh are we going to make it through this and then it goes up again yeah. and you're oh, we're gonna make it through this. i mean some of the things that stand out in that time and what well, was it just the difficulty of trying to argue with your wife <laughs> <laughs> when your parents are in the next room you know what i mean you remember us trying to argue and like you know like arguments like <laughs> You really want to get into it. And then you're going, shh, 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 shh. You can't go, you know, yeah. my mom is just right there. Keep it down, keep it down. Yeah. So, so we, we would whisper argue. Yeah. <laughs> I think Trevor Noah said it, that it happens to only like white people in malls. That's what we were doing. Like, <laughs> we were whisper arguing, which is like the most difficult skill to have. You know, we were literally arguing oh, while whispering. My God. I think the, the challenge for me, you know, essentially I'm the daughter of the house, but mm. at the end of the day. And, you know, there's just certain certain moments where they expect you to be your daughter, but, you know, you can't step out of being the Magodi. Like, for example, it was difficult for me to just relax and you know, just throw my legs on the couch when there were dishes or when we needed to clean and everyone would just be like, relax, you know, and, <laughs> and I'd just be like, if my mom walked through this door, and found me sitting here with dishes in the kitchen. She would strangle me. So I, mm. I, I, I realized that I put that pressure on myself so much to sort of be like the cleaner of the house, to maintain the house. I need to take care of my mom-in-law. I need to take care of my husband. I need to take Even care though of there my wasn't daughter. Like that expectation. And there was no mm. expectation of that whatsoever. Um, you know, I think it goes without saying. Like if you're raised a certain way, it's difficult to just throw things out yeah. the door yeah. when you are somewhere else. And I think that that pressure that I have placed on myself mm. soon became a responsibility, and then it soon became a lot of pressure uh, a, and a huge burden mm. that caused a lot of friction for us um, mm. when we were there. And then another thing I, I, I experienced to be a little bit of a challenge is I'm someone who's very vocal. Like <laughs> Rex and I, we sit and we thresh things out. Wherever, if you know me, you know like I'm not afraid to call it. And now when you are in the presence of elders, who are not just elders, but they're your in-laws, you know, there's only a certain place you can be like, ah, but I don't agree. Uh, you know what I mean? And I found that for me, and maybe I needed to digest it or figure out a way, um, even though my parents in law welcome a conversation, I just found myself not being able to, to, sp to speak when I'm feeling wronged or when I speak when I'm feeling pressured or speak when I'm feeling tired that it it resulted to me being silent and being withdrawing um and and i'm sure everyone knows if something is sitting on your chest and you start to be quiet about it it comes out in all sorts of like mm. passive aggressive ways um that ended up looking like yo sister is so moody <laughs> and you know i think for me it's only because i didn't feel like i have the space to be like but but mm. yo you know, and it was just. Uh, mm. I, th as, as, I think as a Makoti, it's difficult no matter how much freedom you're given. Mm. It's just naturally difficult to be yourself mm. fully, you know what I mean? And I noticed that when you were at home. Um, 
Well, for me, I was I grew up there, you know. Uh, we moved at that family home when I was four years old. So from the day we got there, my feet were already up. I was already throwing things around. My socks were, you know what I mean. Um, and I think the tension was also that, you know, you you wanted that freedom that I had, but you know that you 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 can't have it. You know what I mean? Because you're a makoti, that kind of thing. Um, so I think I think. Um, just being sensitive to that, you know, being sensitive to, hey, like, how are you feeling? I wish I would have been more sensitive. Like, hey, my love, how, what would you want me to do? You know, how can I support you while we're at home? Uh, rather than just taking it for granted that I have a, a fairly liberal family, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. uh, I'm like, uh, you know, my mom is chill, mm -hmm. you know, pops when he's back home, he's chill. Mm -hmm. Um, but not knowing that you, you do have that inherent pressure as a mm. mother to perform to an extent uh, to show that you know your son didn't marry nobody mm. your son married somebody mm. and I'm going to show you mm. you know what I mean um, so so that was interesting to and say. I guess it's a conversation we don't have often to mm. say you know we've been burdened with a lot of responsibilities and a lot of you know, uh, or the way we need to uphold mm. ourselves as Bomakoti, as daughters-in-law, mm. um, that we subconsciously police ourselves to live by. Mm. Even though no one is expecting you to do it, you do it because you feel like that's what's expected of you. Um, I, I recall many times where your mom and dad have tried to, to engage me in conversation to be like, what's up? Like, let's talk. And even then, I still couldn't be like, be yourself. this is how I really feel. Because I still felt like, this is not how you speak to your mom and mother. This is not <laughs> how you speak to your dad and mm. mom, you know, you just keep quiet. I think for me, one of the really inspirational experiences that I had when we were there was um, really seeing you serve, you know. Um, and a lot of people who know you know that that's the kind of heart that you have. Um, but it's very easy to serve when things are comfortable for you. You know, you, you can, I'm in my own home, I'm doing my own thing. Uh, but when you're in, in someone's home and you are looked at and, you know, you feel like, you know, you can't really do as much as you want to do. I saw you really, really trying, you know, to connect with my mom, trying to connect with our family in the farm. So you're serving, I saw you... I mean, family functions, mostly, most of the time, you were, out of the goodness of your own heart, no one was asking you, you were the one on your feet, running around, um, doing stuff, you know, doing stuff for people. Um, it was great just to see you allow yourself to be part of the family. I mean, we have a lot of um, news about, you know, in-laws and daughter-in-laws and how that relationship is always, like, harsh. Yeah. And difficult but I, I saw you trying to step out of that frame and allow yourself to love them allow yourself to love my family allow yourself to serve my family um, and allow yourself to really integrate into the family and say I'm not a daughter-in-law I'm, I'm my mom's daughter this is my mom you know just seeing that happen because honestly we never really spend that much time at home where the relationship between you and my parents were, were tested you know, this was the first environment we're going to be here 24 7 it's the lockdown so there's no opportunity to get out and, and escape um and you, you you literally just were like this is where i'm at um i'm going to serve and i'm going to make the best of it you know so it was just wonderful to see that and i i i got to see that shame i got i got a really good wife you know, to really experience you in a, in a lovely way, you know, you you try to make the load light for all of us, you know, so thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Another thing I, I realized also is, it, it may, I don't know, it may sound weird, but I realized that we needed to watch ourselves so much because we knew we were being watched. <laughs> so we needed to watch how we speak to each other. So even though I want to be mm. like, excuse me, mm. I'd be like, what do you mean? <laughs> I miss it so much. Yeah. I got to learn a lot about you because I see how your mom addressed you, things that you like. For example, uh, certain foods that you grew up with, uh, learning to cook them in a specific way. Like now I've nailed uh, gravy. You love gravy and your mom cooks it perfect. And I've learned <laughs> that recipe. There's a couple of other recipes that I learned. I mean, I learned so much from my mom-in-law, man. Like I, I really valued 
all the lessons that um, she gives. You know, every time uh, Lurgo's dad is at home, Lurgo's dad is a pastor and he's, he's, he has a beautiful grasp of the word. Oof, beautiful. So every time he was at home, it was constantly a moment of connecting and listening to like profound wisdom um, from him, you know. So there was, oof, there was a lot of learning, a lot of learning. I think I came out of that place a more humble person, um, willing to swallow my pride. I came out of that place having a greater appreciation of silence. I'm, I'm, I think I'm learning the power of silence, that everything doesn't always need to be resolved with words. Mm -hmm. And just being willing to learn. I just remember having greater capacity to mm -hmm. be like, you know what? There's clearly a lot that I don't know. There's clearly a lot that I'm very wrong with or wrong at. And I'm, I'm now willing to, to step into a journey where I need to right, right my wrongs or at least attempt to because no one can ever be perfect. Uh, but just a greater capacity to want to grow and learn and change parts that need to change about myself. As a man, one of the worst things that can happen to you is losing your source of provision for your family. You know, um, what drove us into that uh, scenario was losing my job. And so moving back home, I had to deal with that. You know, I had to deal with, ah oh, man, I've just lost a, a source of provision for my family, you know. Um, and I've brought them into these circumstances. I'm the one who did it. So I had to like deal with that, that guilt of, yo, you know what I mean? Um, bringing my wife and baby into this situation, which was a very, very safe situation, but not ideal. You know, as a couple, we want to have our own space, have our own home. So I had to deal with that, you know, just trying to bring up again, just my sense of pride as a man. Um, so that was tough. That was really, really tough to go through that. And, um, and also seeing you as well, not in your element really um, much, even though you're right, like that situation allowed us to really grow. Um, and I could see that my wife is also growing. She's allowing herself to grow. Uh, but it was also tough, you know, to see you not in your element, you know. Um, so yeah, it was, it, was, it was a tough, tough experience, you know, tough experience, but um, very, very good very necessary. Uh, you remember what Meza Misa said at our wedding? Mm. She said in marriage, um, you'll go through all four seasons. Mm. You remember, she said you'll go through summer, you know, which is exciting, and you'll go to spring before, you know, which is like things are blossoming. And then you'll go through autumn, where slowly things are being plucked out of you, and things start to go down. And then you go through winter, when it's cold, mm and it's dark and it's gloomy. Um, you go through all those seasons. And I, I remember when we got that word, we didn't really think much of it. It didn't mean much. It didn't register, it. you know what I mean? But when that situation happened, we had to remember what we were told on our wedding day. Mm -hmm. That, hey, remember that these seasons happen mm -hmm. and we are going to get out of it. We're all going to experience spring again. Mm -hmm. uh, but in those circumstances, you have to decide that it's not going to take over your, yourself you know you're, you're going to have to own that experience and say we're here for this season and what am i going to get out of it you know um so yeah these are moments where we have to say the grace of god <laughs> the grace of god got us through, through that man because mm. there are times when we're just like how did we overcome this moment how did mm. we overcome that moment um and we did we, over, we overcame it um one thing we're not speaking about though is the blessing of moving with our mom and dad in law is we didn't have any responsibility of rent <laughs> yeah. of school fees because schools were shut mm -hmm. of electricity of whatever i think things we would pitch in with is like gross yeah. remember a time we wanted to like do stuff and your dad was just like no guys you came home because you needed a uh, shelter and time to breathe and we're going to give you just that we're not expecting you to do you know much and so we could save. And I can't tell you how many debts we closed down. The times. Yeah. We left so much lighter. We, mm. we left, it helped us. It literally was a time where we, we sorted out our finances. Uh, that by the time we, we moved out, we started on a clean slate um, with a few financial responsibilities. And you know, we, we could breathe like, yeah. yo, 
I don't know if we've ever extended a bigger of a gratitude to your parents, but mm. on that aspect, your it allowed us to to pay. reset financially. Yes, you know, um, yes. and like I, I think a lot of people will be able to understand. There's a culture in big cities and in metropolitan cities where you know couples come together and start accumulating debt mm. uh, because you're in the big city and you know you you need to have a big house or you need to show that you know you're in the big city and i think um, to an extent we fell a little victim to that um and so this season allowed us to reset and say hey guys you know you're back home hey no more big city lights how are you going to move on after this how are you going to decisively make it work again financially and for you as a family as a unit uh, because you, you know you can't avoid things you, you, I couldn't avoid at that point losing that job. Um, there could have been cushioning that we could have done. There could have been money that we've been saving. We could have moved in in a slightly tighter home that was uh, less expensive. So there are a lot of adjustments that we could have done, but we didn't. And so moving home allowed us to have a new lens, yeah. a new perspective of how to do it again, given the opportunity. Um, so God is faithful. We've given another opportunity to do it. And now we're doing it with so much more wisdom, you know. Um, so that's the beauty of going back and resetting of humility. Yep. You are humbled. What am I going to learn in this humility? Mm -hmm. So that when I get back and climb again, um, I can do it with less pressure. Um, so, uh, yeah, we, we are so thankful for, for that experience. Yeah. It was tough. It was very difficult. Extremely difficult. Mm -hmm. But... It was necessary. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the story of having to give up our home, our own space, and move in with our parents and the challenges and losing of it all. I don't even think we've remembered everything. Like there was so much, but those are some of the things we remembered from that experience. Uh, and yeah, thank you for listening to our stories so far. Um, and please remember to subscribe, but subscribe, remember to share. Yeah. Uh, remember like, to like, like. like. We will see you again next week. We